How to coach, you want to start with a questions or a statement? No, I'll start with a statement. Uh, again, uh, you know, coming back uh, after evaluating the film, uh, there's some good things on there, and there's some, there's some things we have to clean up and get, better, get a lot better at. Uh, a lot of critical plays in the game that we could have uh, had control of the game that we have to learn to execute on both sides of the ball and in special teams. But at the same time, see where those issues are, how to fix them, the way to fix them. They're very fixable. And the guys can and plenty do the job. And uh, just got to get ready and get better between the first and second game. Got a great opponent coming up. But uh, had opportunities on both sides of the ball throughout the game to take control, let them stay in the game. They did a very good job. But at the end of the day, our guys still had to make plays on defense when we had to get the ball back, create some turnovers. Uh, offensively, uh, had opportunities to score, scored a couple early in the second half, and then uh, uh, but then got to the four minute at the end, got a huge drive where the defense never had to go back on the field, got a big first down, but also on offense, got to clean up turnovers, and that's that's the th big thing. Two or three of those turnovers are ready to score points, and if you get there to up two to three scores in the game, you can get control of the game, but those are things we have to do, learn to play those critical plays better and do that. And uh, two uh, miscues we had on special teams in the return game, uh, you know, we got to get that cleaned up. I uh, thought we had, you know, keep working on that and uh, get better at that because we have two very talented guys doing that and uh, made two poor decisions, but we'll get that coached up. We'll do a better job coaching them and get going. But we have to get ready. Got a very good team coming up. Alabama, as you all know, great team. Been a great team uh, for a long time. Very talented in all three phases of the game and uh, playing played very well their opening game. And uh, we got to go on the road and play them. So we'll have to get ready to play. Questions? First question is from Robert Sessa at the Bryan College Station Eagle. I can't hear you, Rob. You're, you're on mute, buddy. I'm oh, sorry. No, that's okay. Uh, uh, after the game, Jimbo, you talked about the players needing to be in a better frame of mind. I wondered when you looked at the play of both both the lines early on, uh, the slow start, was that because of possibly that frame of mind? No, I uh, I don't think frame of mind. I said frame of mind to compete and, you know, and, and learn to make plays all the way through. We let a couple of critical plays go. Uh, defensive line-wise, for the most part, we're very physical in the run game. Did a good job. Did not create enough pass rush early. Then we got the pass rush going. Uh, played to run pretty well. Offensively, uh, protection uh, for the most part early was pretty good. Had one, the one that got the ball tipped. Uh, running game, like I say, early. We were throwing it more early, but had a couple shorter runs. Then we got the – the option and a couple of things going on the perimeter and got some good runs. But again, you got in this league, you got to be up front. I don't think anything about they weren't ready to play or any of that. Just got to play better. We got to be physical and got to come off the ball. And Vanderbilt did a good job early on a couple of things, and we got to keep continuing to play. Your next question is from Travis, Travis Brown with the Bryan College Station Eagle. Hey, Coach. Uh, two questions for you. Uh, yes, first off, uh, some a status on a, a three guys, Hez Jones, Luke Matthews, and Clifford Chapman. Uh, injured, got, got injuries on those guys. Okay. And, uh, and one guy, um, uh, may have opted, one guy's opted out. Okay. Is that Chapman? That's Cliff, that's, Cliff. that's Cliff. That's okay. Cliff. Cliff has. Okay. okay. And then, uh, how has, uh, travel plans changed because of COVID and everything? I know y'all were usually like to get out on Thursday, bring your academic people. Is that still the case? And, and how has that all changed because of the, no, no, we won't do that now. We'll go, we'll go on Fridays, get there, uh, and it'd be there one day because in the other, we have to get the academics done here if we can. Uh, in that regard, it was worked very well for us. It actually, the academic staff loved it. Uh, but we can't, we've got to be safe. We can't expose ourselves to people who are outside our, our we don't want to a bubble, but, you know, in our, our own little world as much as we possibly can. So try to eliminate as many cases that way as we can. And we'll go back to the travel way we used to travel and getting there on Fridays and getting set in your meetings and all those stuff. Thanks. Thank you. Next question is from Owen Buchanan with TexAx.com. Uh, yeah, Jim, but what um, is it that you did not see uh, that would have made you decide not to play Demond, uh, Demond Demas and Achain and uh, Moose and some of the freshman guys? Well, we and, did some. And, but we had other guys that are, that are playing their positions are doing very well. And we didn't have many carries. Just making sure we're trying to get Spiller and Anias some carries in the beginning and make sure they get enough time because Spiller didn't get enough time until we got him in the game and got going. We want to get him in early. We had a plan to get them all in there. We didn't have as many plays. And, you know, those other guys on offense were playing well. It became a very tight game and not a game that, you know, wasn't a chance to break, break a new guy in for his first time. And he's doing well, playing well. All those guys are – I'm very happy with them. They're going to be really good football players, and you're going to see them here in the future. We just got to get the right situation to get them in there. And that, just, that opening game right there just wasn't the right time, in our opinion. Could have played them, and I think they would have been okay. But there was no reason to take a chance when the other guys were in a, getting in a groove right there and we were in a one-possession game. Would you expect that they would play this week? 
Yeah, hopefully. All right. All right, your next question is from Tyler Shaw from KBTX. Coach, what would you say – I know you talked about cleaning up turnovers and just seeing to play mm -hmm. better, but the, the biggest focus you need to do in order to um, be competitive and be successful against Alabama? Well, I mean, you can't, you can't give them anything. you got to make them earn anything. You definitely – I say this, turnovers and big plays affect the game more than anything. And third down conversions and your red zone opportunities. And you look at every game, that's the biggest things it does. we got to take care of the ball on offense. Uh, not give them those opportunities, especially when we're down there ready to score points on uh, two of those turnovers. Two of those turnovers led direct. We had touchdowns that led directly to turnovers that we could have been 14 points the other way when you get control of the game. And I think you can't do that. You've got to be able to create explosive plays and stop them. But up front, your battle's up front, and, and the trenches are going to be big because Alabama offensive and defensive lines are both very physical and very big and very experienced. So I think in those regards, you know, you're going to have your hands full. And, of course, their skill guys are good too. But you got to be able to take care of the football and establish yourself on both lines of scrimmage. Next question is from Brian Peroni from Gigum247. Hey, Coach. Uh, I just had a question, I guess, about uh, Kellen Mond. You know, there's been some struggles lately. Is there a possibility that we could see another QB if the struggles continue against Alabama? Listen, Kellen, he, he played a – I went back through the game. Decision-making was well. We missed it. There was about four or five throws he wish he could have made. Uh, a rail route uh, uh, on uh, twice right there. A low ball to our tight end one time and a, and a ball across the middle we hit, but could have got up for a big one. Uh, but, you know, you're always – if something happens and your team's not moving, but at the same time still did a lot of good things with football and you got to take care of the two, the two critical turnovers uh, on the fumble on the slide we can't have. And uh, at the end of him and him in the back on the, on the pull mesh because we're pulling it, it's going to be a touchdown. But however that works between two guys, we do those 25 to 50 times a day depending on which day it is. So we got to get that ironed out. But, yes, you're always – every player is. But still, I mean, Kellen's played a lot of football and had a lot of experience, and we'll keep playing and doing what we're doing and get those – you keep developing those other guys. I guess just a quick follow-up on that. If uh, either Zach goes out or Haynes King are called upon, are both of those guys SEC ready? Are both of them prepared to, to play an SEC opponent, a top well, two team? I, I feel so, and they've practiced against an SEC opponent every day and practiced against our, our defense, and we got a good front, good people on that side of the ball, and they practice against them each and every day and do a good job, so I would assume so, yes. All right, your next question is from Chip Howard from Sports Talk. Uh, Jimbo, besides the obvious, with a lot of five-star players on the field, w what are the most difficult uh, uh, opportunities, uh, problems of getting ready for a Nick Saban team on both sides of the ball? Not only preparing for them, but playing them. Well, I mean, they, 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 listen, they've established a culture of winning and playing great football, and, and, that, and they, they've established that over a long period of time. And Nick's got that established there. So, I mean, that's the first thing because they understand how to win. They're very sound. They're multiple schemes. They're very, they're very sophisticated, very complex in all their things on offense and defense. And there's a lot of variations off of it. And they have, of course, they have the weapons all over the field to what you have. So they can use them. They know how to use them. And, uh, and they've established it over a long period of time. And they've created great competition within their team with their team depth to get on that field. So, you know, you got guys that are playing very well. And they know how to win. And, and they're very well coached. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from Mike Lucas at KAVS. Hey, Coach, how you doing today? All right, how are you? Good. Coach, when you look back at the film and you see, saw what Kellen did well and, and what he can improve on, are some of those mistakes easily correctable and you'd expect him to correct those moving forward yes. against Alabama? Yes, I mean, like you say, the first drive we punted, we had the bad thing, then we come down, we have a great touchdown drive, and the second drive we go, we're going in again. We hit a screen and we're down the one-yard line fixing to go up 14-3. to three. And we get a penalty, move back, and we're throwing the ball on third down uh, for a touchdown. There should be. I mean, guy, he's making the right read, going the right guy. Guy's wide open, and he's throwing. The guy gets tipped and, and behind him. So, I mean, then we have a punt. Uh, then we had the, uh, that fumble. Then we had a series. We didn't get anything on the scramble. And then we're at halftime, and we score. Then we had the fumble on the other. We had a ball security issue right there. A couple, about three, had to miss the rail route twice. And the other, I mean, those things are things he's hit, he's done. We got to continue to work on. We got to continue to get better. But they're they're very very fixable, very fixable. And we have to play better, keep playing better around him too. But you know, as a quarterback, you can play. You can have a hundred plays. You can play ninety seven of them perfect. If there's two or three bad plays. You touch the ball every time can affect the outcome of the game, no matter what that scenario is. And you have to understand that. And and you know, there's you got to be perfect as a quarterback. That's just the way you got to play. That's the way you got to think. Thanks, coach. Thank you. Your next question is from Brent Zorderman with the Houston Chronicle. 
Jimbo, you mentioned the 55 plays the other night. What is your approach tempo-wise? Is is the idea maybe to kind of drain the clock and keep your offense on the field to keep your defense off of it? Or no. what, what is ideal for you? No, ideally we like to have 70 to 80 plays a game or more. I mean, because you don't want to overdo 90 or 100, I think you can do it. But big thing, we had to convert third down. We had two great drives the first half. We had it. And we also get how many possessions you get back from your defense. Like I say, they hit a couple of third down conversions early in that game. They converted third downs, which is something we got to work on on defense, and gave up some third downs. We didn't get the ball back. They had the first drive was like an like eight-minute drive. You know, your quarter's over, and we go three and out. Then we have a uh, touchdown drive, and then another long – actually, the other drive was longer than the touchdown drive. Uh, we, we were ready to score, and we fumbled, and it was halftime. So, I mean, it, that's two things. It's not just the pace you play with on offense. It's getting stops on defense and getting the ball back to you, too, which allows you to get in the rhythm or get into that, too. So, either way, I mean, by how you got to play the game. So, to go no huddle and do all that real fast is good. But you don't want to play your defense 90. But there is a tempo that you want to get more. And we'd like to have 75 to 85 plays a game. That's what we usually average somewhere in that realm. Speaking of defense, how satisfying was it? You've been with him now almost three years to see what Michael Clemens did the other night. Yeah, Michael's had a great camp. He's been one of our leaders, has really done a great job. I played very hard, got the big sack, was in on another one. I mean, made big plays. The guy has done a really, really good job and is really understanding the, the importance of being a senior leader and how he's practiced each. I mean, every day is the same with him. There's nothing different. It's wide open and encouraging and challenging other players on your team. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from Gabe Bach at TexAx.com. Yeah, Jimbo, I wanted to ask you about Leon O'Neill. What's really been the key to Leon from the time he announced he, his intentions to enter the portal, which I don't believe he ever did, and then he came back and then he got himself into good graces again, and you see what he did the other night. What, what's it is. really been the key to his rejuvenation? It is. I mean, there's a lot of things that go on with kids right now with all the things that are going on in the world. I know we've all said that a zillion times and they're 18 to 22 years old. How many times you change your mind? And, and I think he come back and he was dedicated, was locked in. We, we were very supportive of him. And I tell you, Leon lost weight. He got, he got really running, doing better. He's gotten his weight down. He's running, moving better, playing really well. Uh, you know, I missed a couple tackles the other day, but man, he made a lot of plays. He's getting in position. He's having fun. He knows what to do. He's older. And I think just, you know, getting his confidence back, you know, it, which can come and go very easily. I mean, people don't realize that a guy's confidence, you know, you have a bad day, you challenge yourself. Uh, if you pay attention to social media too much, they can, you know, or he can help you. I mean, you know, those things go both ways. So I think Leon's learned to focus on what he focuses on. He's got himself in tremendous shape. He's lost weight, probably 10, 12 pounds at least. And he's running better, moving better, and in the knowledge of what he's doing. And he's locked into play. And he, I thought he played pretty well, makes some really big plays in the game. I also wanted to ask you on the offensive side of the ball, I, and I could be wrong, but I don't think we saw Spiller and Anais on the field together until maybe the last play of the third quarter. Do you expect more two back as a focus? Yeah, we point can be. Offense? We can be. I mean, it wasn't because we just didn't have the plays. You know what I'm saying? The scenario yeah, of the game yeah. and the possessions. Like I say, it was only four each half, and then one was running out the clock at the end of the game, one was, you know, getting out of the clock at the end at the other. Like I say, the possessions were very limited in what we did and uh, keeping the ball and I mean, it was a shortened game. And I'd like I say, you really basically had eight possessions to try to do something with the ball in the game, and that's about four less than you usually have. So a lot of the things we wanted to rep and do weren't included in that, and then we finally got some of the things we wanted going. Your next question is from Justin Woodard at KAGS. Coach, you may go back to the uh, limited amount of plays, but we didn't see very many downfield shots in the passing game. Uh, is that something we could expect more of moving forward? Hopefully we will. We got we got the first couple of drives. We were just getting the ball out of our hand, getting a rhythm, getting a tempo. Uh, again, like I say, what he did, we took we took one. We threw it a little bit low. We caught it for about twenty some yards. But say that we made ten big plays in the game, and that was uh, that's usually that's a pretty good number. But uh, we're taking it down the field more. We had a couple called that we had to check down and bring down, uh, and what we did, and uh, we hit one or two. But uh, you know, the Peggy chain, the fumble was one was down the field. It was going to be about a 25-yard throw right there was in the shot that we, we got tipped. And like I say, you got to protect on those two. So you got to be uh, very uh, educated on how you take them, when you take them, and how you expose yourself protection-wise, too, and some things. But, yes, we want to. We want to create big plays, and we've thrown it down the field pretty well in camp. All right, we've got a follow-up from Brian Peroni at Gigum 247. Yeah, Coach, I was just uh, wanted to ask about sort of the, the turnover margin. I mean, I know that – you know, there are some fluke turnovers, and, and some of the ones have been, you know, you've explained some of the ones for this game. But last no, year, you guys, I there's, were, hey, there's no turnover that's excusable. Yeah, I don't last, care what yeah, things last happen, year you but. guys were, were, I think, last in the SEC in margin and, you know, lost it to Vanderbilt. I mean, what do you have to do on both sides of the ball to turn that around? 
be balanced, secure on offense, take care of it, and create them on defense. We created two big ones on defense and on offense. We had three, and we don't need to have three. I mean, like I said, uh, do better ball security, protect better, uh, not get your guys exposed. And, and when you get in a, and get in a crowd in a huddle, got to make sure we have one stripped out. We have one slap when we're sliding, which is, you know, both those. And we had one tipped on a pass, which uh, coming around back. So one's a protection, one's a ball security in a pile, and one's a, just pure and ball security. And we work on it every day, and we're going to continue to work on it and keep working on stripping on defense. We've got two big ones on defense. So hopefully we can uh, get better on that. Got time for a few more questions. Let's go to um, Zach Taylor. Uh, Jimbo, just wanted your impressions of uh, Mac Jones so far playing at, at Alabama. Very, very uh, uh, well coached. He knows what he's doing. Very accurate. Very good quarterback. Very productive. Makes great decisions. Accuracy down the ball. Uh, got really good wide outs, and he gets the ball down the field to him. Dumps it off good. Really has a good feel for what they're doing. Uh, can even scramble when he has to and make plays. But he's a he's a guy who sits in there, and makes decisions, and is very accurate with the ball. And and is played when they when he's played for them, he's done very well. Throws the ball down the field well. Next question is from Owen Buchanan from Texas. Yeah, Jimbo. When uh, you know, hopefully I'll, I know you hopefully you don't have to pump, but when you do, they they got Jalen Waddle Waddle back there. Um, what do you do when you when uh, how do you counter something like that when you play opponent? who has such an ex explosive guy back there returning kicks? Well, first of all, you get great hang time on your kick. You get your, you get your gunners out and win, and win the battles, and you try to pin them, or you don't let him touch it. Is that what y'all were trying to do last year? He had such a big, he had such a big game returning the ball against y'all. Possibly did. We had a couple wrong and didn't get down on coverage on a couple times, and we, got to, we, got, we just had big discussions on that in our special teams meetings today about what we're doing, how we're doing it, and procedures which we're using. I don't think I want to say I'm on here. Old. I understand that. Uh, and do you feel do you feel better about the matchup with your secondary and and their receivers than maybe you did in the previous years? Uh, well, that's not. I mean, they they have dynamic receivers. They got first round guys. I mean, they had them two last year, and these two they got right there. Probably two, and the young guy coming on. I mean, he looks like a very good one too. So I mean, when you got first round guys, you're always worried about no matter how many first round guys you got because they have players, the tight ends, the backs catch it. So. Yeah, I mean, we, we feel confident going in with our guys, but at the same time, we understand now you can't, you can't blink, you can't take a thing because those guys are running away from you, catch it. They can catch it and run. They can go deep. Uh, run. They're great route tree runners. I mean, they're complete receivers. So that's going to be a huge challenge, and you got to find ways to pressure the quarterback against a very good offensive line. So, we, listen, we got our work cut out. We know it's a good team, but at the same time, we go play and play ball and compete with them, and we had our opportunities in the past with them too. So, I mean, we respect them to death, but we got to go play. Thank you. Question from Chip Howard at Sports Talk. Yeah, pack, piggybacking on that, Jimbo, most teams you play, I'm guessing, have one or two guys you say, we can't let those guys or that guy yeah. beat us. H how many guys would you say Alabama has when you look at them and say, well, we can't let this guy beat us? Well, I mean, you, you see all their skill guys. I mean, Waddle, Smith, the tight end, uh, receiver, eight. I mean, all of them, the, all the receivers, the backs, all those guys. I mean, Naji, the other guys that come in, they're all top guys. I mean, it's been the good guys is in the country. Quarterback, I mean, I got players everywhere. I mean, so, you know, you got to play all the way across the board, and that's what, that's why, that's what makes great teams is when, you know, they, they, if you take one away, they got another guy to go to, you know, and, that, and that's, they do a good job in their passing game of doing that and their running game, getting balls to players. Thank you. Thank you. Got, got time for two more questions. We'll go to Travis Brown and then Gabe Bach. Oh, there it is. Hey, Coach, I noticed a lot of the – or heard a lot of your players after the game talking about how um, much it was shaking the rust off uh, hitting guys and, and playing another team. Do you feel like now that you have to face maybe one of the toughest challenges of your season, your team is ready to face Alabama this week? Oh, we got to have a great week of practice. We got to prepare. We got to get our game plan and go. But, I mean, our guys will definitely, I feel, be up to the challenge. They'll come compete and they'll play their tails off. I feel that 100%. I love our guys. We've had a good camp. Uh, we've got to play better than we did last week. But at the same time, you know, th those things happen. And But the thing about it is we persevered and found ways to keep making plays either side, whatever we had to do to, to come out of that game with a win. And there's something to said about that, too. So that's, that's really good. So we need to play well this week. I think our guys will be ready for the challenge. And I love our guys and ready to compete. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, we'll finish up with Gabe Bach from Texas. Well, let's end with a positive, Jimbo. You've been around some really good safeties. Is Damani Richardson in that class, and what makes him so good back there? Yeah, I think he does have chances. He continues to grow and develop. I mean, first of all, he has size, speed, and athleticism. I mean, he has that – you know, there's a certain level of athleticism when you're talking about you want to be elite, I mean, that you have. And, 
and he has those qualities. He's a tremendously hard worker. He's very physical. He's intelligent. He studies the game. He has all the traits to go do that, and he's developing each and every day. I've, I've seen, like I say, he's not even the same guy from a year ago when you watch him. Because I've got to see him in practice over and over and over again. And just so many little things you used to know it's in practice you may get away with here on offense, and he doesn't see. Man, he just he continues to learn because he studies, and he's such a conscientious, dynamic young man. I mean, he his as I say, his hard wiring and his importance of things, a team player, but understanding how hard he's got to work and all the things he's got to do to be successful. I mean, he, he has all those things. So I, I, I hope and pray that he turns out to be what we think he can, and he's doing it so far. All right, that's all the questions we have for you, Coach. Thanks. Thank you. Have a great day, guys. You're welcome.